for being God over our situation. We praise you, God, for being God over our minds, our hearts, our wills, oh Lord. And we lovingly and we reverently give you ourselves, God. We're saying, be our manager, be our God, yes, be our master, be our Lord in yes, everything, Lord. God. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. we praise you. And we say thank you for this word that is coming forth. Thank you, Lord. God, don't let us be poisoned by the seasons uh, uh, that we may be in of attack, God, and affliction. Yes, Lord. We ask now, God, that your will be done, that your word be a, a sustenance. Yes, Lord. Oh, God, feed us today with milk where if we're immature and meat as we go forward. Thank in you, Jesus' Lord. name. Yes, Lord. Now have thine own way. Have Bless that. the word. Send, send Rhema, send revelation, and send the hand praise, the, the hand touch of your of your mighty hand into our situation, God, where we are weak, make us strong. Where we are where we are without understanding, give us understanding, God. Yes. Where we are, where we need wisdom of God, give it to us in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Word my mouth, oh God, as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank God for all things. We thank God for Jesus today. How many of you are encouraged to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. 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 To be in the house of the Lord. There's some things that I found out about God. He don't need a lot of people to do big things. Amen. He don't need a whole bunch of folks to do nothing. I'm thanking God for all that he's doing for me. Yeah, and amen. if God is doing something, you ought to give him a hand praise. You ought to tell him thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you ought to tell him thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God. Thank you. God is a mighty God. Thank you, Father. Truly God is God of our salvation. Amen. And I want you all to, to really focus in today because somebody may be saying, that's a strange topic. <laughs> Don't let the poison kill you. When I was looking the other day um, in the aisle to buy some cleansers and some other things, I noticed that the same cleansing agents can come and they can poison you. If they're ingested the wrong, if they're used the wrong way. Right. And today I want you to understand that the enemy comes to poison you right before you're about to complete your assignment. Right, right. He comes to destroy and to put something in your system that is foreign to your operation. Yeah. So he can debilitate you. Let's go to Acts. Well, let's go to Acts. Passing my Bible, please. I left my Bible in my bag. Acts, the 28th chapter. And we're going to start with the third verse. Acts 28 and 3. And when you have it, say amen. 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 We thank God. Come on in, sister. God bless you. Amen. Good morning. Acts 28 and 3. Amen. We thank God for those that are coming in still. Thank God for. Uh, Visitors from last week, we want to know, want y'all to know that we love you. Amen. 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 We're in the book of Acts, the 28th chapter. Yeah. Starting with the third verse. And the word of God reads, And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and had laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer, whom, though he has escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffered him not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Say, I feel no harm. I will feel no harm. I will feel no harm. I will feel no harm. Now look at this. How be it? They looked when he should have swollen and fallen down right. dead suddenly. Right. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God. You may be seated. Don't let the poison kill you. Yeah. It's funny how in, in life things will come to upset you and to bother you. Yeah. And sometimes as if it festers, it'll ultimately try to kill you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to be careful because, like I said, when I was on the aisle looking for cleansers and other things, if they said that if you if you ingest it or you happen to take it, 
Yeah. You have to call poison control. Yeah. How many of you know that if something comes to get into, it, it doesn't affect you until it gets inside of you? Yeah. It, it, it's certain things that if, if they, they won't affect you biologically, they won't affect you mentally, understand? they won't affect you spiritually yeah. until they get inside of you. Right. And I've been telling people all this week, something on the inside, I, I, I need God to take out. Come on now. I need something. I need God to deal with some things. Yeah, deal with Because you know, anger can come to poison you. Yeah. yeah. All right, Pastor. Bitterness can come to poison you. You're right, Pastor. Come, come on, somebody. Yeah. You got you gotta it, it'll come and it'll start poisoning your spirit. And if it poisons your spirit, that means it's gonna poison your thinking, it's gonna poison your 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 outlook on things. You'll start looking down when God wants you to look up. You'll start looking at stuff on, being way when God wants you to already see victory and deliverance. Yes, come on now. You got to understand that the enemy, if he can't kill you right off, he'll put something in your spirit. Yeah. That may ultimately be your demise. Yeah. When I look at this, I have to understand two things about the kingdom. The first thing is focus. Okay. You got to focus on God. Somebody say that that seems easy. No, no, no. It's not easy when you're facing a diagnosis. It's not easy when your body is racking for pain. It's not easy. When your marriage is on the rock. It's not easy when your children are acting crazy. It's not easy when you're facing addiction, when you're facing mental health, when you're facing all these things. You have to focus on God. You're sure right, Pastor. Yeah. Because I believe in this time, because people are, are, are really rejecting God, rejecting the word of God. That's why we have all these mental health crises. Because God lets us know in his word, and he will keep you in perfect peace. Yeah. Whose mind is stayed on your the, the reality of your life and my life right now. You live the way you live because of the way you think. You sure, mm -hmm. right, Pastor. That's 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 why the word of God says, Let this mind be in you. I gotta let God be in my thoughts. Yeah, I have to let God be in my praise. I gotta let God be in my doing because as a man thinking, so is he. That's why poison coming, you, you gotta get it in your system. And God says, I don't want I don't want your system compromised because I've taken you somewhere. Yes. When we look at Paul, Paul is on a journey. Mm -hmm. Paul, who had been a great persecutor of the church, is now a great herald of, of God. Yeah. He is a he, he is a man that has been called out. Even when he was blindly doing what he thought was right, God says, I need to set you in right order. Now, how many of you know that you, we used to do some things that was wrong? We, sure right now. we thought they was right. I ain't going to hurt nobody. Come on, somebody. I ain't hurt nobody. I ain't hurt nobody but me. No, you, no, you're hurting because God says that every sin that we commit, we commit it against him. Sure, right, right. You, you didn't just do it yourself. That's that's why David said he, he said against thee and against thee only have I done this thing. Yeah. When we sin, we sin against God. Right. And we need to understand that the devil wants to make make you poison to where you think that nothing you do is really that big a deal. Mm. How many know you can get in the wrong relationships? Yeah. You can be yoked to the wrong thing, the wrong person, the wrong situation. God wants you to understand any way that the enemy can get poison into your spirit, he's going to do it. I was looking at this video the other day uh, on YouTube, and there was this young lady, she was at a bar. And there were two guys that walked in, they were dressed very professionally. And uh, so one, they came in and went down a little bit away from her, and they, they were concocting something. They, one took out the vial, made sure you had the vial. And the other one, they hit glass, and the other one went on the other side of the young lady, and she was sitting there. She was drinking a drink of, I guess, a white wine or something. And uh, she was by herself. And so the guy went up and started engaging her. And while the other guy who was engaging her, the other one went, and he put something in her drink. And he heard it and mixed it up. And then, but this is all caught on camera. I hope you understand it. And then they, he, he said, let's, he said, let's get a drink. Let's, let's toast. They, he said, let's toast. Them. She said, okay. And they were having a good time. And, they, and the other guy got, got in the conversation. And they all hit glass. And she drank that. And after a while, she started to get dizzy. Mm. She started to fall. Yeah. And so they, they supposed to be her friend. And they started taking her out to her car. Yeah. 
And they started to put her in the back seat of the car. But a homeless lady came and said, is she all right? And they said, get away from here. This old night, get away from here. You, you get a, and she was like, no, that lady, do you know her? And they were like, stop. And she started calling for the lady. She said, hey, come over here. This lady's in trouble. Homeless woman had never met her. And a group of women walked over there. And the lady is out fully in the back of the car. And they walked over there, they were like, hey, do you know her? Is she okay? And while they engaged the men, one girl went to the back seat and started lifting out. And they saw that it was, they saw that it was a problem. So they pushed the girl back, took her body out of here, and backed out the, out the drive. Don't you know the devil wants to get something in your system? Yeah. That's gonna make you fall out. Right. You'll get weary in the time when you should be focused on God. Sure, right. You'll get weary. But Paul never had that, that's what I love about the zeal of Paul. Paul never got to a place where he allowed what he was in to take his focus off of God. Yeah. He said, I'm in prison, but the, but the word of God ain't in prison. That's right. He said, I'm bound, but the word of God is not bound. Amen. He said, I, I have circumstances that I don't like, but it's not going to cause me to lose sight of what God called me to be. Amen. How many of you know when you know who you are, God will give you to be focused on Amen. who he is? Amen. I, he, Paul, Paul said, I know who he's made me. I know what he's given me. I understand that I got to go be somewhere. Yeah. What, what, what kept Paul focused? When we look at the 27th verse, we see where God is sending Paul to Rome. He's sending him to Rome. Well, how do we know that? When we, when we look at the word of God, we see here that um, in, in Psalm, I mean, in, in Acts 27, 24, he said in 23, for there stood by me this night the angel of the Lord, whose I am and who I serve. He, Paul is letting them know. He said, say, fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all of them that sail with thee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's happening now? I want you to see this. Paul has been on a journey to Rome, but when Paul told them, he said, wait a minute. He said, look, 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 look back here. I want you to see this. To the 10th verse, he said unto them, Sir, I perceive that this boy will be with hurt and much damage, not only to the lady and the ship, but also to our lives. Don't you know when you were when you were in the spirit of God, when you were in the presence of God, when you pray, when you listen for God, don't you know God will start telling you what's going to happen before it even get here? Right. Yeah. Some people look and say, how past to know that. Let me, let me tell you something. God will speak to you just like he speaks to me. Yeah. God will tell you what the enemy's trying to do and what he wants to do before he can do it. Yeah. yeah. He, but, but, but see, if, 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 if we get poisoned by folly, see, folly can, you can always want to be fun and, <laughs> and yeah. that, that ain't of God. Right. God wants you to be serious. Yeah. You don't never see the Queen of England and none of the people over there want to always throw a party and do something. They know that they have response to what? Responsibilities. Yeah. And you got to be careful that you stay before God in prayer. Say this with me. Say, don't say anything, don't say anything, anything until you heard something in prayer. Until you heard something, something in prayer. prayer. Paul had told them before leaving that place while they said on the creek over against Sal Salmoni, Paul had told them, he said, don't go right now. But see, Paul understood that even though God told him, don't you understand that there are some people that won't listen to what God tells you for them? I told people some things, and all of a sudden, boom, bam, boom. They, they don't want to believe that. You know what they want to believe? I want to believe what I what I want to do. Yeah. I want to believe what it is that I believe should be right for my life. Right. I want you to understand that in the midst of the struggle, when we pray and confess the power and the glory of God, God will always give us a warning before we enter into that dangerous place. Yeah. I, I want you to understand, you, you don't have to be in danger when you're in danger. Yeah. Uh -huh. what, what do you mean? I want you, to, I want you to look at this. God will put you in places that may be dangerous, but you're not in danger. Yeah. Okay, let me show you this. Yes. When we look at Moses, I want us to see Moses. Moses is a man that gave up on his life because he wanted to do God's will his way. Mm -hmm. right. Sometimes we know what God called us to be, but we don't want to walk out the will of God for what he's making us to be. 
Right. right. Well, I, I know I'm called to be this, but God says you don't want to walk in my will so I can make you what I called you to be. Okay. When they make the tires for cars, they don't just make the tires all the same way because they have to specify the tire size and the tire tread right. because the, the tires that fit on your truck won't fit on my car. Right. And the tires that fit on my car won't fit on your car. Right. So God has a specificity for your life. Somebody say, I'm, I'm specially made. I'm specially made. Yeah. He, he has a specificity for your life that if you will allow him to fashion you, you will perfectly fit into the yes. situation and the yes. destiny he's given. Amen. Amen. That, that's, what, that's what's confusing to me. You don't know enough about what the resources, what the environment, or what the circumstances are for you to try to dictate to God how you're going to move, move forward. Mm -hmm. Right. Look, look at Paul. Paul. Paul understands. No, I, I didn't mean it for Moses. Moses, thank you, Lord. Moses is in the wilderness. Moses had a staff, a stick, a common instrument. Mm -hmm. Moses takes a stick and in order for Moses to turn that stick into a serpent, he had to cast it down. Mm -hmm. He had to follow God's instructions. Right. Then he had to pick it up by the tail when it wanted to become oh, a yeah. stand. Mm -hmm. Then when he gets to the Red Sea, he, gives a, he has a staff and God says, what is it that you got in your hand? He said, I just got a staff. I know it can turn into a stick, I mean a snake, but I don't know what, this ain't nothing what he says, just stretch it out. Sometimes yeah. you gotta cast down what you got, mm -hmm. and sometimes you gotta stretch it out. Mm -hmm. But whatever the instruction is, if you don't know how to use it in that moment, you're in a dangerous place. Right. But if you hear God, you won't be in danger. That's right. Mm -hmm. He'll use a staff to part water. Mm -hmm. He'll use a love, he'll, 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 he'll use a word in season yes. to stop the enemy from trying to come on your territory. Yes. I mean, you know that when you use it the way God told you to use it. That, that's, that's why I know two things about God. God will use circumstances that seem adverse to us right. to make us to understand that he's still in control mm -hmm. even when others say that you can't make it any further. When, when, when someone says, I'm going to stay quiet, that means sometimes we have to stay quiet mm -hmm. before we start talking about our circumstances. This goes back to last week. We can soak the wrong things by saying the wrong things out of time. Right. Uh, we can sow the wrong seed by giving the wrong impression. Sometimes we will poison where God is trying to take us simply because we don't want to wait on God. Right. We will talk too soon. We will talk about the wrong thing. The Lord told me this when he said, stop bringing up the people. Mm. I'm getting ready for yeah. church. Stop bringing up the situation Yeah. and stop bringing up all this other. He said, because you're poisoning what you, I, I need you to hear me. Yeah, yeah. How, how many of y'all know you can't hear God when you're always rehearsing the same situation right. over and over again? Right, right. You can't keep telling. You can't keep telling Jesus like like uh, Martha did, Mary did. He said, "By now he stinks." <laughs> Wait a minute. Don't raise. It. By now he stinks. Right. By now he. I don't want to hear that, Jesus. No. By now he stinks. He dead. He been, You should have been here when you wanted to be. Now Jesus said, "Be quiet. Let me do what I do." Right. I mean, you know, when you love God, you know how to be quiet. Amen. 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 I'm gonna let God fight for me. <laughs> now look at this. He had already told them in verse 10 that the voice was going to be to their herd of much damage. Prayer gives us insight to what is ahead. If life and circumstances can keep you and I from praying, we will not be prepared by God for what we are about to encounter. Right. Are you gathering seed or are you sowing seed? That's the second point. Right. Every time you fail to come to the house of God, every time you fail to not have the word of God in your heart, not to study the word, not to give the word. To, I mean, you got to give the word to somebody else just like it's given to you. Right. How many of you know that you you and I are called to be witnesses? That's why I don't believe in no quiet Christians. Hello, somebody. Come on now. <laughs> you you sit back. I just want to be, you know, love everybody. Oh well, no. You got to give. You you they you, you if you don't have any word in you, you can't give any word out of you. Amen. And when God says you got to come and get seed. Seed is what you carry so you can sow it in the place. Don't you know when you sow the right seed in the places where you work, in the places where you are in opposition, don't you know that seed will start changing the environment? It'll start changing everything around to where people that want to hurt you, want to destroy you, want to push you off course, you can't do it no more. Because the seed is getting into the ground. Yes. And when the seed gets into that ground, it's changing what the ground is producing. Yeah. See, seed can be your, your heart. Yeah. But seed can also be your environment. 
And I want you to understand that God is dictating to us that God, he, can, he can do anything that he wants to in order to preserve us. God uses seed to turn the hand of the enemy into the favor of his preserving power in the season of attack. We, we Like Mother said this morning, we, we see that the serpents in society are trying to kill us because when it comes to the enemy, he sees serpents as a means of death. Right. I look at the cobra. I look at the king snake. I look at all of these different serpents that are here. All of them have a different toxin, but all of them can be deadly. Amen. All of them, if the different toxins attack the nervous system, they attack the eyesight, they attack, they attack the heart, they attack everything, but every one of them has a, a, adapted an attack in order for it to be debilitating to the one that it gives us to. How I many you know that poison? It doesn't matter if the poison gets into your skin as long as it doesn't break, break the skin. It can't make you poison in your system. Why are you saying this? When Paul when Paul is on the ship, the ship is broken down. When they come to Melitus, let me let me turn back here. It is. I, I didn't got I didn't got on on the other thing. When when it comes to Acts, the twenty eighth chapter, we, we see here. He said they went to Melita, yeah. and the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received every one of us because of the present rain and because of the cold. Paul has been shipwrecked. Paul has 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 had to float in the sea. Paul has had to tell people, "Look, I already told you this was going to happen, and you got me." He never blamed God. Yeah. Paul said, "I told these folks that they were going to be bad. God, you got me out here. We're about to be shipwrecked. I'm about to be in the midst of the sea." But God shows Paul that even though you may be in a place or in a circumstance that is dangerous, you still have me preserving you, Paul. And in fact, the call on your life is so good, I'm gonna, it's so powerful, I'm gonna give it to where you are gonna be preserved and everybody on the ship. How many of you know that when you are a believer, you can you can take you can preserve other folks' lives when, when your lives have been preserved? Amen. Now I've, I've been around people, man. When, when, when they, they just, they, you know, you in a place, uh, I'll never forget it, I was in a, I was in a club one night, and, uh, and uh, I was just sitting there, and, and I, I'm like, man, I'm going to leave. And as I was walking out, a whole big group of gang members walked in. Talking about gang members. Mm -hmm. And you could tell they were dressed like, and they were doing their thing. And so these guys, there was two guys that were standing there, and they were tall. And they had, you know, that that Teddy, that Teddy Riley fashion. Oh, they yeah. had their large, large shirts on that had that little cut to the side. And they just standing there. And so the girls all wanted the guys. I'm getting to a point. And so the, the guys didn't like it. They got to argue with the gang member. And so I'm like, man, let me get up out here before something pop off. Mm -hmm. So as I was about to leave, the bottle, they, somebody took a bottle, came up behind the guys and cracked them both on the, on the head. They were bleeding out on the floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And something just said, pull them into the back room. Because they were standing, and I got them, and I pulled them in. I pulled them in the back room, and I told them, I said, grab it. Pull them in the back room, because the guys were coming back. And we pulled them in the back room, and then somebody got the police officer and said, somebody called the paramedics. Who was it? And as soon as the police officer stepped into the situation, everybody started leaving. And I said, Lord, I'm in the wrong place. Right. Doing the wrong thing, and all of a sudden, they could have got stabbed. Right. They found the guys. One of them had a knife on them. One of them had a gun on them. But because I was there, I, I believed in God, but I wasn't walking according to God's will. Come right. on, somebody. Right, right. How many of you know you can you can you can be a believer, but you're not submitted. Oh, oh, right. Amen. Oh, right. Amen. You can be. You, somebody say, but I don't believe in that. Well, sometimes we get to a place. Where we still want to play with stuff, yeah, it's dangerous, it's dangerous. You're sure right. Now. You ever seen folks that uh, I, they they like to stick stuff into the into the into the outlets? Man. You like to play with that, but that's dangerous. Man. Come on, somebody, Man. kids to do that. Right. Uh, we we like to play with stuff, even, even when we come to know who God is, we still want to play with some stuff. Right. And God says, uh uh, don't do that. Right. He said because it's dangerous. For you to play with some things, right? Sure, right. That's not for you to play with. That's why he said, he said, he said, this is what I want you to listen. He said, 
He said he wants you to forsake the, the sin and the weight that does so easily beset you. He wants you to leave that sin alone. I mean, you know that when you when you get out of addiction, when you get out of drinking, when you get out of all of this stuff, you can't play with it no more. Sure, right. But the enemy is right there, always trying to say, "I love you." Remember how I used to make you feel? Remember how I used to make you? Feel? Remember how I used to make you and you got to say, no, I love God. I don't need you anymore. Yeah. Why, why are you saying this? Danger comes from you always trying to play with what God is wanting to do in your life. Yeah. So when we get to the place in Numbers, we see, see God loves to say, God loves to use serpents to bring his will, but he leaves the responsibility to us to kill them. Amen. I mean, you know that God will let serpents come. But he leaves the responsibility to us to kill them. Yeah. I don't like snakes. That's all right. God gave you some promises about snakes. He yeah. said, I want you to see this. God gives us mastery in what seems to be the circumstances for our demise. Mark 16 and 18. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. If They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall what? Recover. Luke 10 and 19. Behold, I give you power to tread on what? Serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. God gives you, God, God, God allowed the serpents to come, but he always gives you the responsibility for killing you. I'll never forget this. When, when, when my daughter was younger, we were in Galveston. We used to always go on these summer, uh, you know, the week long, we'd be at a week long in the summer beach house. The whole family would be there. Right. And we just be enjoying God. Well, one day we they were at a park that on the seawall. There's a park it used to be like this, this little fun thing. Yeah. And they were standing, and it was a snake, it was a poisonous snake. Mm -hmm. And that snake, when I was walking up, the snake slithered in between her legs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I said, Alexis, don't move. She's like, what? I said, it's a snake between your leg, and the snake went into the water. And so. I saw the snake and I got angry and I took rocks and I started beating the snake and I started hitting the snake and I killed it. And she was just crying and I put it in the bag and I held it up and I took it to my uncle. He said, that's a poisonous snake. Had it been her, I remember. she would have taken, she would have had to go to the doctor. Yeah. But the serpent came. I could have blamed God and said, why do you let this happen to me and my baby? But no, I want you to understand this, serpents are coming but it's your responsibility to kill them. Yeah. One day, they, they were having some construction near the house. I got pictures of it. There was a copperhead in the front of my door. Oh, my God. It had eaten frogs, because we have a bunch of frogs. We used to have a bunch of frogs. Be, and so snakes, when they come out and you wake them up, they get hungry. They, they're hungry. So they had eaten the frog, and the frog was And I was on my phone, coming from out the car. And the Lord said, look up. I looked up, it was a big old copperhead right there. Yeah. I called my, called my daughter. I said, don't come out the front door. Don't unlock it. I need you to open up the garage and give me the, the, the hope. And so I took the hope, and the snake is there with a big old lump in it with the frog. And I got the hope, and I just started beating the snake. And, and I just, and, and I thought it was enough. And some say, cut the head off. Mm -hmm. I said, why? I said, cut the head off. So I kept until I cut the head off. Because you can't assure that the snake is dead. Mm -hmm. Until you cut the head off. And even if you handle the head wrong, that head will bite you, even after you cut it off. Sure. So God gives us mastery. Say mastery. mastery. Over the serpents that come to poison us. I want you to understand that in Numbers, after they murmured against God, I'm about to, I'm about to quote, as they, when they murmured against God, God sent fiery serpents in their midst. He's a, a good God. Let fiery serpents come in your midst. Mm. Well, somebody would say that that seems come on, man. Mm. come on now. But don't you know that God will protect you until you start murmuring against what He's trying to make you? Mm. He'll let, he he kept the snakes away, but He took His hand of protection off of them and let the snakes come. And as they were they were in the wilderness, number twenty one four and five, He made fire. He, he made the fiery snake serpents come out, bite them, and many of the people of God died. And when they came to Moses, they said, "We sinned against God." And we murmured against you. Help us to get out of this situation. Mm -hmm. And you know what God said? He said, "Make a, a fiery serpent of brass. Make a make a serpent of brass and lift it up." He didn't say go get an ointment. He didn't say go get no neurotoxin. He didn't say go get an antidote. He said just lift it up. Amen. He used the same snake image. Amen. 
I mean, you know, sometimes you just got to lift up what God gives you Amen. in order for this healing to come forth in your life. Yeah, I'm preaching to myself today because when God says He'll take up, He says they shall take up serpents and they shall not drink anything deadly. He meant just that. Yeah. God didn't want you to go out and start handling the snakes. He says the spiritual snakes in your life that bite, bite you, that that come into your mind, try to poison you. Try to bring opposition to how you think about God and how you think about yourself. I believe that the biggest thing that can happen in your life, the, the enemy will poison you to start looking at yourself as insufficient. Yeah. He will start look, make you looking at yourself as you're the problem. I used to have this problem. I'm the one that's the issue. I, I must, something must be wrong with me. And God says, no, 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 it's nothing wrong with you. It's the sin that you allow to infect you, yeah. to overtake you, yes. to make you do what you don't want, need to do. He says, this not, the problem is not you. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. I love you, but because you won't listen to instruction and obey, then the sin has to come oh, to take you out of the way. Out the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not me, God. I need you to save me from me. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's not me. It's the sin that I allow to what? Master me. When you, got, when you let God save you, he will master you in areas that you will have mastery over the serpents. Amen. Mm -hmm. They can be there. But they can't bite you. Yeah, they can be there, but they can't get to you. Yeah, the saint, the serpents didn't come until they start learning from God. That's why discontent. How many you know if you discontent with God and you start saying, "I don't know why God got me here. Mm. I don't know why I got to go through all this. You ain't no better than nobody else." Amen. He said, "You must. Do, we must do much persecution, much affliction. We gotta. We gotta go through all of it. it, it it's people in other parts of the world." They don't eat as good as we. And we complain when we can't eat what we want. <laughs> you go get something to eat. You got a pantry full of food. You got, but it's not what you want to eat. Don't you know the serpent is sitting there trying to bite you and poison you? Mm -hmm. gosh, all right. Amen. Don't let him poison you. Yeah. Because if you start talking with your mouth, yeah. you'll start planting the wrong seed in your season. Last thing. We must make sure and we stay busy for God. Paul is gathering sticks. Paul is not sitting back and saying, I'm the apostle. I got a calling on my life. Y'all go do that menial stuff. Y'all go do that small stuff. Paul, when, when Paul was at, at, at Ephesus, he was a tent maker. When Paul had the Sabbath day off, he went into the temples and he convinced men that they were they were what? Worshiping the wrong God. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when you're not busy for God, the serpent of, of laziness, discontent, right. malcontent will come and it'll try to bite you and latch on to you. Yeah. And you'll try to fill up your life with stuff that really don't mean nothing. Mm -hmm. You want to go and have fun when God said, I want to fill you with some good stuff. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is seed. This is seed that if you plant it in your heart, yeah. he will bless you to be an overcomer. Overcoming. Lastly, 1 Corinthians 10 and 9. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of what? Serpents. 2 Corinthians 11 3. But, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be, your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is Christ. Yeah. What do you mean? The devil will try to start making you lower the standard that God has for your life. Right. You don't mind if I if I go do this or that and indulge in this or that. And he, no, God never said that. He said you should put a difference between clean and unclean. Yeah. Holy and unholy. What does that mean? The old Kwame don't look like the new Kwame. Right. And the new Kwame don't look like the old Kwame. You got to put a difference. And a lot of times we don't want the difference. We want it to be what? You want to make them as close as possible. Right. I want to, I want to enjoy life. But, 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 but let me say this. When you are delivered, your enjoyment becomes something totally different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Amen. I, I want to enjoy Christ. I don't want to enjoy all of that out there. The, the, the devil will dance with you, but he'll bite you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The devil will feed you, but he'll poison you. Yeah. The devil will give you things, but he'll always make it like you're the one that is discontent with God. And, and you got to make sure that you're not discontent with God. Amen. Lastly, he shook it off. Somebody say, shake it off. Shake it off. Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire. And there was a viper in the heat that came out of the heat and fashioned his hand. I, I hear the old saint says, I wish somebody would catch on fire. 
yeah. and burn with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. If you don't have a source of fire that's external, you can have an internal source of fire that keeps the poison from getting to where you are living. Yeah. That, that snake attached himself to his hand. But Paul being full of the Holy Ghost. How I many of you know that what came to kill you can't get in you yeah. because God will keep it out of you? Yeah. Yeah. He'll preserve your heart, your mind, your spirit. There's some things that, that the, the devil tried to bring to me on this week. And I told the devil, I said, no, devil, I belong to God now. Yeah. And you got to go get his permission to come touch me. Yeah. Laying there, I'm like, God, you know who I belong to you. Yeah. And that serpent will come and he'll try to latch on again. Right. But how many of you know that when he latch on, if you got the fire you burn, all you got to do is shake him off. Yeah. Don't let the poison kill you. Because he comes. But if you're positioned in God, right? If you got a posture of God, I belong to you. You never have to worry about it. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand, praise. <laughs> There's some things that we're facing. The Lord said that He's going to allow a crisis. Yeah. Mm, a crisis. I don't know why He said this, but I, I'm going to say what He said to show His preserving power. Yeah. In your life. We're going to let a crisis come for him. And it's going to show his preserving power. Yeah. And it's going to turn others around you to Christ. Because you stood and didn't let the poison kill you. Amen. Amen. You didn't let the talk. You didn't let the, 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 the anger, the bitterness. I had, I had to guard against that. Because he said, if you let it in, it's going to kill you. Stand to your feet all over the room. People cut us off live. If there's something